by the commitment of the government to position the extractive sector at the center of our economic drive through prioritizing and improved governance of the sector, let me, on behalf of His Excellency the President, launch the ETAP 2 project. The Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Jule Jallo, in the key in keynote address and launch the Extractive Industries Technical Assistance Project Phase 2. On behalf of His Excellency President Julius Madapio and at the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources, organizer the Miata Conference on a Free Tongue, who said the project coordinator, Extractive Industries Technical Assistance Project Phase 2, Mustafa Gabriel, talk about the focus ARM of the project. Improving mineral sector governance, enhancing geological knowledge, and support to the artisanal mining sector. On December 1, 2017, the financing agreement for a $20 million ITAP was signed. The project was declared effective on March 1, 2018, and will close on December 31, 2022, with the objective to strengthen governance, knowledge, and sustainability of the extractive sector in Sierra Leone. And at the World Bank, been signed this agreement with the Salon government for support the extractive sector governance. Who said the country manager World Bank, Dr. Gil Martin, says Salon gets plenty natural resource system, with this he believes it still not benefits the poor people, but been commending new government for the leadership in this sector. Sierra Leone ranks 65th out of 158 countries in per capita mineral wealth. This ranking reflects the fact that Sierra Leone is one of the world's non-oil mineral rich countries, which is especially ranks it high when it's measured in per capita terms. However, the country's people have not always benefited from this wealth. I'd like to commend His Excellency President Madabio for the leadership in trying to get the balance right between the country's investments in people, in institutions, and its natural resources. This is an important balance that many resource-rich countries get wrong, and I commend the government's leadership for the, its early steps in the right direction. I really look forward to us seeing coming together, maybe annually, to see the results being realized under this project for the people. Dr. Martin Kayon say different body them go get technical and financial support under this project. With this, he said the bank seriously committed to one. And the local authority then na key player then na the mining sector for make sure say government and the people wait up na the different mining community them across the country benefit from area them when mining company them don't they operate over the past year them even though plenty of people don't they accuse them for the things them we know right na the sector we make the chairman national council for poor man chief them pc fasuluku sosiama the third been appealed to government for look inside the Mines and Mineral Act 2009. Most paramount chiefs and region chiefs present here today are very uncomfortable with the activities of some exploration, like the holders and companies. They think their operations are not only transparent to both communities and government, but they view their activities not only to be surrounded in secrecy, but also to be wrapped up in cocoons of expectations. It is estimated 80% of Sierra Leone's diamond originate from artisanal mining, mostly in Kono and Kenema districts, respectively. The use of that moving equipment in artisanal mining is now in conflict with the 2009 Mines and Minerals Act. We, Paramount Chiefs, are therefore appealing that a provision of consideration should be made in the review of 2009 Mines and Minerals Act under the IPAC 2 to accommodate responsible use of art moving machines and equipment in artisanal mining. And according to the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Dr. Priscilla Swart, say the different law them with the guide this sector need urgent review. The Office of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice is the principal legal advisor to government with responsibility for preparing and drafting legislation. I must admit and take responsibility that the Mines and Minerals Act 2009, Local Content Agency Act 2016, Extractive Industries Revenue Act 2018, Environmental Protection Agency Act 2008, and the National Minerals Agency Act 2012, among others, which constitute the basic legal framework of the mining sector, need urgent review to usher in more clear and transparent provisions. The legal efficacy of the licensing regulatory regime could be more undermined by the current cadastral system, which foundation is built on haphazard polygons that engender duplications and conflicts, non-transparency, and serves as a platform for chaos. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice continue for talk about the ARM, we then get concerned with. 
I am concerned that in identifying project beneficiaries, despite the specific reference in the project objective to enhance the legal and regulatory framework, my office, the law officer's department, the government powerhouse of legal capacity, which mandates to advise and give concurrence to every agreement to which government of Sierra Leone is a party and undertake all legislative drafting is conspicuously neglected. In the past, the office of the attorney general are left to clean up after mess of other consultants. But in this new direction, the state law office intends to assess its role and function as necessary. And in order to fulfill its constitutional mandate, to provide appropriate legal advice and infrastructure to support all ministries, departments and agencies. Sustainability demands that we are therefore supported to build legal capacity to provide the effective, transparent and consistent legal framework that the World Bank and our partners desires. That this project also deems essential for the functioning of extractive sector, which will also attract the right investor type to Sierra Leone. I want to stress here our commitment to this project. For Sikadis and other reason, them, make the Vice President Dr. Mohamed Jule Jalo where it again in keynote address and launch the Extractive Industries Technical Assistance Project Phase 2. On behalf of His Excellency President Julius Mada BOC, cabinets they consider now forget new mineral policy in a salon. As an EITI compliant country, we remain committed to the transparent management of the extractive industries to ensure its strategic contribution to the country's economic growth. The ETAP 2 clearly reflects the policy commitment of His Excellency the President. In that regard, Cabinet is considering the adoption of a new Sierra Leone Minerals Policy, Artisanal Mining Policy for Sierra Leone, and the Geodata Management Policy. Once adopted, these three policy documents will establish a clear framework within which government will manage the extractive sector for optimal benefit to all stakeholders. The Mines and Mineral Act 2009 will be reviewed to ensure that the economic dividend of that sector is critical to our development efforts. It continues to say government will enforce law them. We go help improve this sector. We have seen in the last couple of years what I will call an institutionalization of exploration in Sierra Leone. We have seen companies that have been around for a couple of years engaging in never-ending explorations. And we believe that this system will help us to address some of those challenges. We need reliable geodata to make prudent investment decisions in the extractive industries and this project no doubt responds to that need. As a government, we will ensure that all legal and regulatory provisions are enforced without bias. The Vice President Dr. Mohamed Jule Jalo say the mining industry gets the potential for boost salo economy. With this he said the new direction government committed to one. For the Society for Ready Democracy, Mohammed Sharif, the reports.